Hey guys, I'm Phoenix here and welcome to Age of Engineering. Now I'm going to be showing you some just quick reactor stuff for Age of Engineering and for the rest of IC2 because it doesn't change at all the core mechanics of working with reactors. But first I should just uh, start with a warning. Um, if your reactors get too hot, they will explode. So it's quite um, advantageous to do the planning either in a creative world or download the reactor planner version 3 uh, it was designed for an uh, older version of industrial craft but the mechanics haven't changed that much and it's actually a really good little program to use so you can find that on the internet um, but yeah so let's just dive into the basics of reactors because this is pretty much the core of this pack um, the backbone will be your reactors because things like your plutonium are only going to be coming from your reactors and early game sort of RF conversion can be done by using reactors. So this is a reactor. Um, it's got four reactor chambers on it which means that it's expanded up to four times. Uh, it can have a maximum of six reactor chambers on it and that will expand this up to being able to use all of the reactor space. Now I do have a, a design that uses, oh, that uh, can handle quad reactors, the uh, quad cells, even. There'll be, there's six quad cells in the reactor and it can be fully automated as well. I've got the beginnings of that one in the other, um, in the old sort of room. Um, but it's not quite finished yet, but I'll show you that design at the end. So this is just a very, very basic reactor. This outputs 10 EU a tick. Now the way that this works is that you've got all the, these components that dump heat. Um, some, of the, some of them, they move heat to other components where the heat can then be dumped. But yeah, this is an overclocked heat vent. It just dumps heat. Next to it is a fuel rod. This makes heat, but it also makes EU. 5 EU a tick to be um, exact on its own. If you were to put a neutron reflector next to it, the neutrons bounce off that neutron reflector and go back onto the onto this fuel cell and it creates more power as a result. It creates double the amount of power. Um, for each neutron reflector that you add, it will get an extra 5 EU a tick um, on top. So the neutrons come off there, bounce back, and it outputs then outputs 10 EU a tick. If you were to add one next to it, it would bounce off the, the 5 EU a tick would bounce off that one and come back and it would do 15 EU a tick. Of course, doing that will also increase the heat of the reactor. So you will need to add more cooling. Um, yeah. Something else you can do is you can put fuel rods next to one another. So you can put a, another single fuel rod, say there the neutrons will bounce off that react that that fuel rod and it will output then each one will output 10 EU a tick which means the reactor will output 20 EU a tick however doing that also bumps up the heat so you do have to deal with the cooling of it now if I turn that reactor on you can see that it's outputting 10 EU a tick and that power is going up into an MFE which is then going into all of these um, electrical engines and there will be more once I've finished it and that will then power all of my RF stuff which will be up here um, it, there is another way of doing this I believe um, well had some issues with this in the past so I'm not completely certain if it's still viable to um, convert EU to RF using um, immersive engineering cables. It worked in 1.7.10 but it didn't work in the crack pack so I'm not completely certain what's going on there. But um, this, this, this method does work quite well and you can do things like put in chips to increase the efficiency of the electrical engine as well. Uh, something that I will, yeah, now we go over to the other reactor where I talk about um, what happens uh, when you need to transform your power. Because the reactor in here is slightly more powerful. Not by much. Um, it outputs about 80 RF a tick at the moment. Uh, 80 EU a tick? Yeah. It outputs 80 EU a tick at the moment because it's not complete. 
I am using a dual fuel rod and a quad fuel rod. It can accommodate a quad fuel rod in there, it's just that I had the fuel lying around so I thought well let's just stick it in um, for the moment because it doesn't necessarily need to be outputting anymore. However, because it's outputting ATE UATIC, if you put a bat box on there, the bat box would blow along with an awful lot of the cabling that you've used as well. This is because the output is far higher than the 30 EU a tick input that the bat box can handle. As a result, I have up here an MFE, which is full, but the MFE outputs 512 EU a tick. Put the MFE in because they're easy to make and um, for you know the future, you're going to want to have a fairly decent battery um, on the top there. So I went with the MFE. However, however, because it outputs 512 EU a tick, if you then wire that into a bat box or in directly into these machines, they will blow. There are two ways of handling this. Either you put transformer upgrades in each of your machines. Uh, you need one transformer upgrade per step down that you do. So if you're going from MFE to um, LV, you then need two transformer upgrades in each of these um, machines well the ones that will uh, will handle it I've down I've stepped it all down to LV so even the thermal centrifuge which I think can take a little bit more than the rest of them um, that's running on on LV and it doesn't really matter because it you know it, it will work perfectly well on LV so what I've got here is two MV transformers so you put the five white, uh, sorry, the five yellow things towards the higher voltage. So we've got high voltage going into that face. I've got it fixed step down on there. And the high voltage out of there is going into the, the high voltage face, which is then coming out of the low voltage face. And again, fi fixed step down there. Um, and you can invert the input and output if you really really needed to but um, yeah we need we need to step down the transformers so that's the setup that I've got and that works and as I increase the power up on there that will go up to 360 EU a tick eventually so the MFE will be able to handle it and they'll just and it will just step down the power um, as I need to However, you know, thinking about it, that reactor doesn't actually need to be that powerful at the moment. But later on, once I sort of ex start expanding out the industrial craft um, systems, then, you know, so things I would, would quite like to have, like um, multiple electric, electric generators for, uh, sorry, electric furnaces for, um, you know, stuff for all processing and the like. Until I get to mechanism, at which point then you kind of, transfer it over but even then you might want to have at the core of your systems um, nuclear reactors because they do last a fairly long time they do output a fairly large amount of power and they are really easy to automate uh, because all that happens is you build six of these systems all the way across uh, with your quad fuel rods going into them like through um, an item conduit you can just tell the item conduit to input um, quad fuel cells you fill up all of these gaps that you've got with reactor plating so that um, the quad fuel rods don't go into those holes and then you put in another item conduit that says pull out any of the depleted cells so as the fuel cells deplete it pulls them out new, new quad fuel rods are dropped in and the reactor just keeps running and in this way you can then make yourself a lot of plutonium for the later recipes which require it so I think things like I don't know if the fusion reactors require it, but some of the other ones do. Um, deep resonance certainly does. Um, wherever it is. I think it's under generator, actually. Uh, yeah, the deep resonance generator the machine frame does require plutonium, as well as machine chassis, which is going to be another aspect of fun. Um, but I'm going to be automating that shortly um, anyway. But with that, I will say thank you very much for watching this little um, chat about nuclear reactors. I hope it's helped someone, um, because I'm sure there'll be p some people playing along with Direwolf with his Age of Engineering um, series. 
and thinking how do I deal with power through these things um, and sometimes it can be trial and error I do know people who have done a bit of trial and error on the FTB Skyblock Infinity and blew their island up twice yeah <laughs> fun times anyway with that I will say thank you very much for watching I hope this has helped someone and I will see you next time